This is Twit. Okay, so Zev said, Hi, Steve and Leo. My name is Zev. Yeah, Z E apostrophe E V. So I'll yeah, go with Zev. Actually, I think. Do you think it's what? Zev? Yeah. Okay. Uh, well, Zeev. unless he's Hawaiian. Oh, I don't know. it depends where he's from. <laughs> and I'm a longtime listener of the Security Now podcast. Your show is fantastic, and I'm glad to hear that it's no, that there's no definitive end date in sight. Yay! He said recently, like many others, I've become interested in AI. As part of a hackathon at work, I explored the Llama Index Python library, which can be used, among other things, to easily create a retrieval augmented generation, which he calls a RAG system. That immediately made me think of the incredible podcast transcripts that Elaine Ferris mm. has created for your show. I realized it might be an interesting opportunity to use AI to gain insights from this amazing trove of data. I ended up writing a simple Python program around 130 lines of code that lets you run a query or prompt to get an answer based on the transcripts. Awesome. After some experimentation, I found that indexing and querying the transcripts by year yields uh. the best results. He said below are a few examples of prompts I tried and the responses I got from the LLM. He also said the code is available on GitHub here, and he gives us a link. I've got it in the show notes for anyone who wants to go there. Uh, GitHub.com slash Z-E-E-V hyphen B slash S-N. And he said, thank you for all the work you put into the podcast. It's been an invaluable source of knowledge and entertainment over the years. Best regards, Zev. This is, this so is cool. Now, you could do this also. Now. With a notebook LLM, if you have all the transcripts downloaded, just give them to a Google's notebook LLM and do ah. the same thing. In fact, I did it with just a, a handful of them, a few months worth, and made a little show. And it sounds just like our show, except it's <laughs> two very okay. nice AI voices. So uh, Zeev shared his query and the LLM's reply about our <laughs> most recommended science fiction reading material and our most recommended television shows. But his third query, as I mentioned at the top, <laughs> I can't wait. and the LLM's response was the most interesting to me, and I figured would be the most interesting to our listeners. What 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 Zeev asked his transcript trained LLM was, quote, how has Steve's opinion on Microsoft security changed over the years? Hmm. And the LLM's reply was. Steve's opinion of Microsoft security has evolved significantly over the years, reflecting a complex interplay of recognition of improvements, growing skepticism, and critical concerns about the company's practices. In the early years, particularly <laughs> around 2015, Steve acknowledged Microsoft's efforts in managing security, noting that the company had developed defenses against constant attacks and was not frequently in the news for major breaches. He appreciated the improvements in security, but remained cautious about privacy implications, especially with Windows 10's, Windows 10's design. By 2016, his perspective began to shift toward a more critical stance, particularly regarding Microsoft's handling of updates and the promotion of Windows 10. He expressed concerns about the alignment of Microsoft's interests with those of its users and highlighted issues such as the lack of transparency in updates and potential security risks associated with third-party antivirus software. In subsequent years, Steve recognized improvements in built-in security measures, particularly with Windows Defender. But he also emphasized the ongoing challenges in cybersecurity landscape. By 2018, he began to advocate for the use of built-in security solutions over third-party options, acknowledging the complexities of maintaining security in a rapidly evolving environment. However, as time progressed, his concerns deepened. By 2019 and into 2020, he expressed frustration with Microsoft's <laughs> inconsistent handling of vulnerabilities and updates, particularly regarding support for older operating systems. 
He highlighted the need for users to be proactive about security and criticized Microsoft's approach to updates, which he felt often led to significant vulnerabilities. By 2021 and 2022, Steve's skepticism intensified as he noted a perceived negligence on Microsoft's part in addressing known security issues promptly. He pointed out that the company seemed to prioritize other aspects over security, leading to a growing concern about the effectiveness of their measures. In 2023, his criticism became more pronounced focusing on Microsoft's reliance on updates and the prevalence of known vulnerabilities in their products. He expressed frustration with the company's failure to address these issues proactively and questioned the ethics of their approach to forcing upgrades. By 2024, Steve's opinion had crystallized into a broader skepticism about Microsoft's commitment to security, particularly in light of high-profile security failures and a corporate culture that seemed to deprioritize security investments. He criticized the company's reactive approach to vulnerabilities and argued for the inclusion of essential security features in base products rather than as a paid add-on. As of 2025, Steve's view reflects a recognition of the inherent complexities in securing Microsoft systems, acknowledging that while improvements have been made, the legacy nature of their software creates ongoing vulnerabilities. He advocates for additional protective measures when using their products, emphasizing the need for caution and accountability in Microsoft security practices. Overall, Steve's evolving opinion illustrates a journey from cautious optimism to critical skepticism, highlighting the need for significant changes in how Microsoft approaches security to better protect its users. I think that and was just, fairly accurate, do you think? Yes. yes. I mean, you know, it has that kind of vanilla yeah, feel. The, yeah, that AI thing. That yeah. AI gives yeah. things. But you cannot argue that to give something a, a just a bunch of text and i mean we are living through a truly astonishing revolution where we're witnessing the emergence of a technology that's able to take transcripts of 20 years of my rambling and turn them into that which while yeah a little pablum ish still you know it's it's amazing that it even is able to say this. Hey, it's Leo Laporte. I hope you've enjoyed this little snippet from Security Now. If you want the whole show, you can get it at our website, twit.tv slash SN. Of course, you can subscribe to Security Now on your favorite podcast or just click one of the links below. Security Now.